and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to talk about today is John Berger, Shika, and I, Jan, you, and Jan Collins. Two of them are here, so I hope I'm not saying too many wrong things, um, but I'm sure they will correct me if I do. Um, so, yeah, so I first want to say a little bit uh, about kind of where the, why we wanted to look at these exceptions of the intersection maps. So, um, I guess one, one line of research that's been like, I guess, people have looked at in the, in the, in the last few years, <coughs> more than a few years. So, um, so, coming from community algebra, I am interested in community of usually not in theory and things. Um, and then one thing a lot of people have started looking into is um, what kind of properties from come from a ring R can we see when we look at the derived category? So <coughs> we have, I guess that there are various derived categories we look at. Oftentimes we have a derived category of finitely generated uh, modules over R. And we want to see what kind of this is a um, and we want to see what kind of properties of the ring R can we see in the derived category. So, uh, yeah, which, what can we characterize? detect or characterize what I mean when we use the triangulated structure of the derived category. Um, so, and the properties that I want to use, I put them here on the side um, of, the, of the triangulated category that I want to use to characterize properties. Um, so, in general, when T is a triangulated category, then we say an object is small, <coughs> Um, if it's compact. <laughs> so it's just another one for compact. Um, and the second property, and that's also the reason why I'm calling this small, is um, an object is proxy small. If it in some sense is close to small. So that means there exists a small object. Um, such that x finitely builds w, so uh, w lies in the thick subcategory generated by x, but to make sure that, that the w is not, is like for example not zero, because that would be too obvious, um, we also want that x, that they have the same support, <coughs> and in a triangular way we can say that x lies in the localizing subcategory generated by w. Um, yeah, so these are kind of the two properties that I want to use to characterize properties. Um, the first one I think already came up yesterday in Shrikan's talk. Um, so just going back to Ausländer, Fuchsbaum, and Seo. Um, the ring R is regular. If and only if every object in the bounded derived category of finitely generated modules is small. So is that what you want? That there exists a W it, compact yeah, object? There exists, exactly, there exists a small, com, a small complex, or a small object that's built by X, and that has the same support as X. So the localizing here just means it has the same support. Um, yeah, so I mean the localizing subcategories are the same. It just, this, this one is then a little bit stronger also. So the trivial object is not in the six subcategory generated. No, in the case W would be zero object. Mm. This X is usually not in, like only it only zero lies in there. So that's that's kind of but, but I mean it's it's a little bit more than just making sure it's not zero. It's also if you have an object that has like yeah, just to make sure the supports match. There can be various things, right? Um, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> So yeah, so using the smallest property, we get a get a characterization of regular. Um, yeah, a, reg a ring is regular if and only if every object in the B of uh, is small. 
Then kind of the next type of wings one could look at um, are things that are close to regular in some sense. Um, so I'll, I'll give a, name, a couple of names in a moment. Um, and those are the locally complete intersection rings. What this means is, I'm not going to give a precise definition, but uh, <coughs> the intersection, you can think about it as a regular ring, uh, modular or regular sequence. Um, the reason why these are kind of the natural next thing to look at is because they have very nice homological properties. Um, I'll say a little bit more about, uh, I mean, this is not completely true because locally means uh, we have to localize first because before they look like that. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm later, for exceptional complete intersection, I focus on local rings. That's why I don't want to get into the definition here. But then these rings, just how I set it up, uh, is uh, a ring is locally complete intersection if and only if every object in db mod r is proxy small. Um, okay, and this is contributed to various people. So the forward direction that for an LCI ring, every object is proxy small goes back to why I mean Um, then for in the local case, um, the equivalent was shown by Thomas, and then I showed in my thesis that proxy small as a local property, which then, yeah, as a consequence from Josh's work, gives this equivalent. Okay, and I mean, so I hadn't planned on mentioning that, but since Shrikan mentioned yesterday, there are also ways to like characterize, I guess, Gorenstein rings if you also use the tensor structure. But since I don't want to want to talk about them today, just okay. Now, instead of like, especially if you look at these uh, complete intersection rings, um, since it's a quotient, one could also ask why why do we have to start with a regular ring? Why not just start with some kind of rings? So that's why um, instead of looking asking about computer noise theory and rings, we can look at we can ask about ring maps. And I'm specifically going to focus on subjective maps because here we have quotients. So this is a subjective. And then one can ask how can one characterize that in terms of the induced functor? So um, especially I'm looking at the restriction functor, which I denote by phi lower star. I hope this is not confusing too many people. But there are no upper stars coming up, so. Um, and then for these rings, one can also talk again about the only complete intersection. That is a subjective ring map. Is uh, okay. So the locally complete intersection locally. They are quotienting. If the, the kernel is uh, generated by a regular sequence, and these were also specified or characterized. Sorry. One is that the projective dimension is finite. That's in, a, a, an easy consequence of when you model by a regular sequence because then the Kuzu complex is, do, it, 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 is a resolution. Um, so this is kind of something you might expect, but it's also stronger than one might expect. I think that's what I've been realizing. And the second one, going back to these triangulated structures, is that the restriction map has ascent of proxy smallness. Um, and I should tell you what I mean by when I say ascent. Um, so I always do, I guess I write the functor 
here this way. And then if one starts with an object uh, over S, one can look at it, look at the restricted. If this is proxy small, I just write proxy small PS, then uh, S that means that then if, uh, if, if uh, the restriction is proxy small, then the object was proxy small to begin with. And I'm just, <coughs> so you're saying that the LCI condition is equivalent to both of the conditions on the right now? Yes, exactly. We need both. So this is an um, N. <coughs> and yeah, this uh, work by Ben Briggs, uh, which we can myself and take one. Okay, so this was kind of uh, when we started looking at these complete exceptional complete intersections, uh, what we knew. And uh, then uh, our aim was for that aim, you can also phrase it as a question depending on how you want to do it. Uh, we want to strengthen the CI condition to get, uh, instead of, yeah, we want to strengthen the CI condition to. So CI stands for complete intersection. I'm probably not going to write it out. Oh, maybe once more, but yeah. So there are kind of two reasons why I wanted to strengthen it. The first one is, um, instead of uh, ascent of proxy smallness, we wanted to ask, what about ascent of smallness? Um, and the second one, which was a little bit independent, but we realized there seemed to be some connections, that the restriction map is faithful. Um, so, yeah, so this was kind of our goal, and we, then we made a, made a guess to see uh, what, for a map that might, 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 might satisfy that, and that was this exceptional complete intersection map. So, <coughs> to the local case because uh, this property is actually not uh, it's not environment under localization. So, starting with a local ring, projecting onto which then also is a local ring S. This is by ECI. If the kernel of the map is generated by a regular sequence, if I stop here, this would be the definition for a complete intersection, and now um, the additional condition for exceptional complete intersections is that we can extend it to a generating set of the maximal ideas. First, give a few examples, and then I also tell you what happened to our aim. Um, um, so one classic, I guess. Couple yes. Is that is regular? No, nothing. No, none of the rings need to be regular here. I admit for all the examples I was going to be regular that I'm going to give you, but that's not necessary. Like, that's not necessary. That's just, uh, yeah. I didn't think hard enough of finding other, other examples because I also didn't think it would be worth it. So 
So taking a power series ring in three variables, um, we could look at uh, mod modding out by x to the s, y to the t, and z to the u. Um, this is always a complete intersection map. Um, yeah, I guess I'm assuming these are all. Um, there's always an intersection, but it's not always exception complete intersection. I mean, a generating set of the maximum value would be x, y, z, and x squared can never be, is never part of a minimal generating set. So, um, and so this is PCI if and only if all the exponents are 1. Um, the second example I'm going to give will come up later. Oh, that's Sorry, but, but you said this is local complete It is local complete intersection, yes. Um, locally complete intersection is a little bit stronger. I mean, here I'm already working in a local case. For locally complete intersection, you don't need to. Um, but the main reason why here I want to focus on the local case is that uh, this being part of a minimal generating set is not a local property. That's why for exception complete intersection, we need to focus on starting locally. But for locally complete intersection, we don't need to do that. Okay, so if S is K, then I'm just basically looking at some kind of some kind of smooth, some kind of regular algebra. Doing? If S is K, if S is the base field. Yeah, maybe yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, the second example I want to give, actually this is, yeah, this is another one, um, is um, here in, in for this ring that would be a regular element, um, but also, wait, what am I saying, what, yeah, yeah, Z is a regular element, um, and also it's part of the minimal general writing set, or the maximal idea. So, this map is, PCI. And this one will come up later again because here, I, I, okay, I do have an example where the regular ring is not regular. Um, this will come up later because the, when, when, we, when we start with a ring that's not regular, not regular, there are some more things that have happening than if it's already regular. Okay. Um, so that, that should be egg, egg squared on the right, maybe? Yes, that should be an X. Thank you. Um, yeah, so one fact about PCI, and then I'll tell you what happened to our aim to not keep you too much in suspense. So our map is PCI, if and only if, so the projective dimension has to be finite. That's a condition we weren't able to get rid of at all. And then being part of a minimal generator. <coughs> means that the map from i modulo maximum albedo times the ideal, so i is always a kernel, um, to m modulo m squared is uh, injective. This is kind of another way to write it's part of a minimal generating set. Okay, so as I mentioned, we started, we had this aim, we had this goal of saying smallness ascends along phi lower star and phi lower star being faithful. Then we had this idea, maybe exception complete protection will satisfy that. Um, as oftentimes that's how life is, neither of them we achieved. Uh, so, for the first one, um, for ECIs we actually don't know the answer. I still don't know. We have a lot of example, positive examples, so we haven't found any negative example, but in general it's really hard to get like, I mean, to find things that are per final productive dimension, but that was kind of the issue. Um, yeah, but we have. But we don't neither have a proof nor a counterexample. You mean we, we know ECIs have the property? Yeah. It's the converse we don't. It's a converse, yeah. that's true. We, right, yes. So we don't have yeah, sorry, yeah, you're right. Um, we don't we don't know that this is a characterization. Uh, 
And for the second one, the angles in general, no? And for the ECI. So there are ECIs where the restriction map is not faithful, but we can say, we will have a way of saying which ones, for which one this is faithful. But we have a calculator. But just by looking at this, I think we still found some interesting things out about, uh, we learned some interesting things about exception complete intersections. Um, so, what I'm going to do to tell to, to can what we can do instead. So sorry, you, you've got these the condition that smallness ascends and, and that proxy smallness ascends. Exactly. Do, do either of those imply the other? We, I yeah, no. don't know. Yeah. The, I mean, that, that, that's also part, part at least of my frustration because it seems like smallness is, sub, is sub, like an object being small is so much stronger than an object, object being proxy small. But for Asan, that doesn't seem to be the case, at least okay. not on the surface. Okay. So yeah, that, that was the issue why we can't go back and forth. If we could solve the problem, that we would be able to characterize ECIs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so instead we have we, we a characterization here, lattices of certain thick subcategories, um, the Hochschild, the action of the second Hochschild homology, and the truncated of the other. And those are the things that I'm going to tell you about, I guess, in the remaining. Say, say again, this is a characterization of what exactly? Of the exceptional complete intersection. <laughs> and if there are any more questions while I raise the board, feel free. So, so, so you have this fact which gives a, some sort of characterization where the first is. Yes, that's true. Like, that's, that's, that's a characterization, but not in the terms of the derived category. And that, right. that was kind of our goal. The, I mean, I wouldn't even say that's a characterization because it's just another, I know it's just rephrasing the definition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any other questions? So if I'm in a complete intersection, then I can characterize that via the HH2 action. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. If I just want to talk about a complete intersection, can I just characterize that in terms of the HH2 action? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I say a little bit about how HH2 looks like, or, a, or the Hochschild cohomology looks in general for the complete intersection, which is, yeah, which is just particularly nice. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Sorry. okay, so I'll say a few things about Hochschild cohomology, especially in the case of a complete intersection ring. So, um, since everything we're doing here is in some sense over, uh, over rings, so we're always starting with a ring map R2S, that means S is an R algebra. Um, I, I want to look at the derived. I think it's social Schuckler cohomology. Um, so when I write the derived tensor product, uh, uh, when I write enveloping algebra, I mean the derived enveloping algebra, and then the Hochschild cohomology. Um, this is the usual thing. Uh, and this is part of the center of the triangulated category, so by, by acting 
with the Rotary cohort on the triangle category, yeah, it's like ample action in that sense. And the Rotary cohort is the graded commuter graded as algebra. Okay, so since uh, the Rutte cohomology is part of the center of the triangulated category X on every object, so explicitly given an object in the derived category of L over S, we get a characterization map from the Rutte cohomology to maps of S. And this is called the characteristic map. Um, uh, I think I'm not going to be super careful about notation, so oftentimes I also just, you know, for chi, if, if chi is an element in, in the Hoshi cohomology, I'm just saying it already acts on that. So notationally, that's dangerous, but I, don't, I hope there's no confusion about that. Um, and then these behave nicely. So for So they commute in a, in a, in a natural sense, have it with some kind of uh, a sign. I mean, and I ignore there, 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 there would have to be some suspensions on some of some of these maps, which I'm just going to go. Which uh, is important is that there's a canonical isomorphism for the second Husha cohomology. So. Um, yeah, I guess here I'm assuming a kind of subjective map. So I is the kernel of phi, um, and the uh, homomorphism from I not I squared to S. I have an isomorphism to the second Hochschild cohomology. Um, and now for the case that the map is a complete intersection map. So that means that the kernel is generated by a regular sequence, then, then the complete Hochschild cohomology is actually generated by the CV2 part. So systematic algebra um, on, the, on the second shift of the morphism from I mod I squared to S. But now, if i is generated by a regular sequence, um, then i mod i squared, if after choosing a generating set for i, we get a natural isomorphism to s to the c, when after choosing a generating set, f1 to fc. And uh, yeah, the F1 to FC those have to be regular. And then I mod I squared is free. Um, and so, so in particular, this means this is, uh, this is of uh, rank C. So this is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in C variables. Um, and each chi corresponds to one of the Fs. So chi I corresponds to F1 and so on. Um, and these are, these are called uh, eisenberg gulickson operators. So they've been studied quite a bit, as, and they're especially useful in the complete intersection case. Okay, then we say that the second Hoofshill cohomology acts trivial, or effectively near potential. <coughs> on, on, on an object in D of S, if uh, for any element in the second Hoechsch cohomology um, 
the characteristic map of that element is zero, that's not trivial. Also, here can be some uh, power of zero. And again, here for the power, there have to be some suspension added. Yes, No questions. I continue with the truncated ATIA class. So again, we well, write this down on the every board. Phi is a selective ring map. Um, then, again, starting with the derived enveloping algebra, there is a multiplication map to ring itself. And then in the derived category of the enveloping algebra, we can complete this to an exact triangle uh, by, I guess, the least exponent cone would be j. So this is an exact triangle in the derived category of the, of the enveloping algebra. Um, now, the homology of S is concentrated in degree zero, uh, and the homology of the derived enveloping algebra in degree zero is also S. That's because the map is subjective. Um, so, in the, for the long exact sequence in homology, we see J, uh, the suspension of J can't have anything in degree zero. Uh, I guess J can't have anything in degree zero. So, the homology of S is just the homology of the enveloping algebra by cutting off the degree zero part. Then the truncated ATIA class, we take, we take the map from S to the suspension of J, but uh, then there's a map to the lowest homology of S, of J, sorry. So, and then there's a map to the second suspension of I mod I squared, and this is a map of complex of all the derived And this is what's called the, the truncated ATM class. Um, and then for every m, we can get a map in the derived category of S. So, the tier class at m is just the tier class tensor of m over S. And this now is a map in the derived category of S. Now we can use these two things. First, the tier class, 
And second, second Hochschule cohomology to, to get a characterization of exceptional complete intersection maps. <coughs> twice on this board, um, phi is the subjective map from the subjective local map. that the projective uh, dimension of S over R is finite. Uh, then the following are equivalent. So phi is exceptional complete intersection. Um, then the Atia class of the residue field is zero. The second Hochschild cohomology acts trivially on the residue field. Um, equivalently, it acts near potentially on K. And this is then called for phi. Or equivalently, like near potent action is something that's uh, closed under, that's, that's like thick in some sense. So if, if it's acts near potentially on K, it's acts act near potentially on the thick subcategory generated by K. So this category will come up again, so I'll denote it by DFL. So these are all complexes that have finite length homology, whose, whose total homology has finite length. DFL. Okay, yeah. yeah um, so I'm not going to, I want to give you an idea of why um, uh, yeah, I'm going to sketch part of the proof, so I'm not... So some of it is relatively technical, but the main thing I want to explain to you um, is, I guess, well, why the here class and Hochschild come out to be connected, um, and then maybe just drop some names of what things come up in the proof. So now I have questions. Is the truncated Atiyah class called that? And um, so, because I mean, in some sense, we're truncating it when we go when we go to I mod I squared. So the issue is uh, this whole construction. We're using usual complex resolutions, but depending on the resolution you use, I think you can get different things. At least in a non-CI case. So usually, we do this with simplicial resolutions, um, and you wouldn't truncate. So when we go to I mod I squared, that's the part where we're truncated. Truncating. So, yes, yeah, so if you just look at S to J, I guess, that would be the normal one. Uh, the cotangent complex, so S to the yeah. suspension of the J mod J squared. Right, yes, J mod, sorry, yes, exactly. So that's the simplifying it. But in the CI case, yeah, so the CI case is usually much simpler. Giving you a sketch, so I'm assuming P is complete intersection and I is the kernel of phi. Then, if we choose a generating set of I, so okay, 
write in the uh, ATIA class. So the ATIA class is a map from S to the second suspension of I mod I squared. If you choose a generating set of I, this is <coughs> a free module of rank C. And then we can write this um, using chi 1 to chi C. These are the degree 2 generators of the Ruschel cohomology. So here we see directly why the Atiyah class and the Ruschel cohomology, the second Ruschel cohomology, uh, both come up. So, um, <coughs> And then, uh, Asamov showed um, that if fi, if like one of these elements lies in m but not m squared, that means in particular, like uh, that, that's true for every every element that's part of a minimal generating set. Um, that these chi i tensor with k are zero. So, uh, and this now, so that means the tensor this whole map with k, we get that each entry is zero. So the map has to be zero. Um, so this shows uh, that one implies two. Alternatively, it shows that one implies three. Um, for the other Implications. So I'm like uh, I guess I'm ignoring four and five, four, four and four prime. I'm focusing on one, two, three. But for the other implications, two, two, three, and three, four, one. Uh, I'll just tell you what we use, and I'm not going to say anything else. So the things that come up are under the current homology. Uh, and there's Jacobi service PC concept. Um, yeah. So, if you look at this uh, theorem, there is a natural, I think, a question, relatively natural question to ask why are we focusing on the Why Why, why, why wouldn't HH2 may be acting potentially on every object in D of S. Um, because there's a counter example. So, uh, as I mentioned, so the, the second example from the beginning. So, K adjoint X, Y, Z, modded out by X squared minus Y, Z, modded out by Z. If here we look at the module S mod X, this does not have finite length. Um, if, you want, if you write down the resolution of M over S, we just need maps that multiply by X, because X squared is zero on M. Oh, no, wait, X squared is zero on S. So, uh, so the X module MM, uh, we get an M in each degree. And then the, uh, the, chi, the operator that's connected to Z, I call it chi here, is just multiplication by Y. That's so chi. And this is clearly never near potent on M. Um, the main reason why it's Y is that here we have Y times Z. So uh, we're modding out by Z, but the kind of the part that remains. I, that's why it's Y. Um, so yeah, so it's not it's not near potent. So it's too much to expect that we have to look to that H2 acts in potent in everything. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going back to one of the aims from the beginning. I mentioned that you were interested when the restriction map is faithful. Um, 
So in general, when CFI is ECI, that need not uh, imply um, that the restriction map is faithful, but um, we get we get faithfulness if we uh, uh, so 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 yeah we get faithfulness by getting that HH two acts trivially basically so following the equivalent phi lower than faithful So, for example, the, for, for, so the example I just gave would not the restriction map would not be faithful. So the idea for the for this last remark is there's this long exact sequence, like if you're only modeled by one element, um, there's this long exact sequence of X um, coming again from the spectral sequence, for example. And uh, there the connecting map between the X of S is precisely uh, the operator coming. So that's why from, from, from that it's uh, yeah, straightforward to see that that would be zero. Uh, but the following are equivalent. This needs phi ECI, doesn't it? See, or is it general? Uh, yes, I think I'm. Okay. I'm assuming that phi is ECI. Yes. Left for the homotopical characterization. Oh, I hope that should be enough. <laughs> um, yeah, so just a bit of notation when T is a triangulated category. Then the lower case thick of some object is the smallest thick subcategory containing X. X. And upper case thick of the whole triangulated category, this is the lattice of thick subcategories. to R, we tensor it over S, and then this is an S module with the left S action over here. Um, now, if the projective dimension is finite, then over R, here it's important to, <laughs> so, yeah, here I think you down here, I mean D of R, um, then the six subcategory of M and of S tensor are now the same. In general, for over S, this is not the case. Um, but if uh, phi 
in the complete intersection, then we have at least one inclusion, then the fixed subcategory generated by S contains the fixed subcategory generated by the tensor product. Uh, we get an equality here if we look at the HH2, at the Hochschild cohomology. So, So now with this lemma, we see how we why we are, why the next theorem seems reasonable because uh, the Newton and action uh, gives us a, it appeared in the characterization of ECI maps. So now. Up here in this lemma, I'm assuming phi is ICI. In this theorem, we don't require that anymore. So here, the assumption does not include complete intersection. But um, yeah, we get the equivalence phi being ECI if and only if the projective dimension of S over R is finite. Restriction map has as a finite building of PFR. So finite building means the building in the sense of a vertex subcategory. So if we take two objects of finite length, you know one wins the other over R, then it has then, then they, they also have it also has to build it over S. Um, but this is something we can rephrase now um, because every functor induces maps on the lattice of the subcategories. state the theory by saying a map is ECI <coughs> if, if the projective dimension is finite. <coughs> and F and G are inverse homomorphisms of lattices. It should be phi upper star actually. Low star makes no, no sense. Okay. The lowest are supposed to take an S module and restrict to an R module. Right. Right, yes. Okay, so I'm not writing upper star, I promise that. So. <laughs> yes. 
So at the end, this is the characterization of the lattices and fixed subcategories, as promised. And amount of time? So, as of